Possible complications. Complications usually happen during the first year after transplant. Many patients are hospitalized for a complication at least once during the first year after their transplant. Rejection and infection are the two most common complications. Your ability to recognize the danger signs of rejection and infection and to promptly alert your transplant coordinator will increase your chance for a successful outcome. With early recognition and treatment, most episodes of rejection and infection resolve with a brief hospital stay. Rejection. We monitor your blood work for any signs of rejection at each lab drawer. Danger signs of rejection include fever of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, discomfort on the right side of your abdomen where your liver is located, jaundice, which is when your eyes look yellow in sunlight or your skin looks yellow, dark urine that is the color of tea or Coca-Cola, pale or chalk colored stools, if you have any of these signs, you must contact your transplant coordinator immediately. We may schedule you for extra lab tests or imaging studies. So what is rejection? Your body's immune system is designed to destroy foreign cells such as bacteria and viruses. Your immune system cannot tell the difference between a foreign bacteria cell and the foreign cells that make up your new liver. Rejection happens when your immune system is triggered to attack and kill cells in your foreign liver. As the cells die, they release proteins called enzymes into the bloodstream. We measure the level of these enzymes when we test your blood. If your liver enzyme levels are high, it tells us that you may be rejecting your new liver. Rejection can be without signs or symptoms, and that is why you will have regular blood draws so that we can look at your liver tests. Even though you are taking medications to prevent rejection, your immune system can still attack your new liver. Approximately 20% of liver transplant recipients may have at least one episode of rejection. If you do not take your medication properly, you will have a higher chance of rejection. Over time, your liver becomes less foreign to your immune system, but you can still have rejection at any time, even years after your transplant. If found early, Rejection rarely leads to retransplantation and can be successfully reversed by adjusting your medications or by treating you with more powerful medications during a one or two week hospital stay. Infection. We also monitor your blood work for any signs of infection at each lab drawer. Danger signs of infection include fever of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, redness, swelling, or foul-smelling discharge from any wound or drain site, a persistent cough that lasts longer than two days with or without trouble breathing, a rash or sore on your skin or in your mouth, frequency or burning upon urination, diarrhea or liquid stools that last for more than 24 hours without improvement. Infections are caused by tiny microorganisms called bacteria, fungi, viruses, and protozoa. Because you are now immunosuppressed, you are at a higher risk of getting infections from these germs that happily lived in your body and did not make you sick before your transplant. Some of the infections you might get are called opportunistic infections. Cytomegalovirus, pneumocystis gervici, 
are two opportunistic organisms that cause infections in transplant recipients. You are given medications to reduce your risk for opportunistic infections. You can help to prevent an infection by avoiding close contact with people who have a cold or the flu, washing your hands before touching your face, and treating all minor cuts and abrasions with an antibiotic ointment. Other tips in preventing infection are given in the lifestyle and activity section. You are required to check your temperature every morning for the first month after discharge home and whenever you don't feel well. Please use a glass thermometer. Do not mask fevers by taking Tylenol or other medication. You should immediately notify your transplant coordinator or the on-call coordinator for any fever of 100 degrees 0.5 Fahrenheit or higher. If you took Tylenol, let it wear off. Check your temperature after six hours. And if you have a fever of over 100.5 degrees, contact your coordinator. Please do not take your temperature after eating or drinking hot or cold foods or beverages. Imaging studies and other procedures used for evaluation of abnormal liver tests and other symptoms. An abdominal ultrasound is a painless exam that provides imaging of your abdominal structures by the use of sound waves. It is performed by a stenographer who will move a transducer over the skin of your abdomen. Gel may be used to help produce better pictures. Abdominal ultrasound with duplex studies can also measure the blood flow in the abdominal blood vessels to detect any problems, such as problems with the hepatic artery or portal vein. The ultrasound usually takes about 30 minutes to complete. Preparation instructions will be provided to you before the test. The CT scan uses X-ray images taken from different angles of the body to create detailed pictures of the internal structures in your body to look for abnormalities that may be the cause of your symptoms or problems. The CT scan procedure does not hurt. Some people may need a dye known as contrast to obtain a better picture. Contrast is most commonly given intravenously through a vein, or you may be asked to drink contrast material. In some cases, you may require both or none at all. Contrast may not be used if you have kidney problems. CT scans are usually avoided in pregnant women. Some people may develop an allergic reaction to the contrast. If you have a prior history of allergic reactions to contrast material, please notify your doctor before the scan. There are low doses of exposure to radiation during a CT scan. You will lie on a table that slowly moves through a large donut-shaped scanner. It is not an enclosed scanner, so claustrophobia fear of enclosed spaces, is not typically a problem. CT scans usually take 30 minutes. Preparation instructions will be provided to you before the scan. An MRI scan uses magnets and radio waves to create detailed pictures of the internal structures of your body to look for abnormalities that may be the cause of your symptoms. Because an MRI scanner uses powerful magnets, you may not be able to have an MRI if you have any metal inside your body. You will also be asked to remove things such as jewelry, underwire bras, hairpins prior to the scan. If you are pregnant, you will discuss this with your doctor prior to any MRI procedure. The MRI procedure does not hurt.
you will lie on a table that slowly moves through a large, long, narrow tube. This scan can last up to an hour. You must stay very still, otherwise the images can be blurry. You may also be asked to hold your breath during certain portions of the scan. Please let your doctor know if you are unable to lie still or flat prior to the MRI. This is an enclosed scanner and the space inside can be very small. If you have a problem with claustrophobia or fear of enclosed spaces, please let your doctor know prior to the scan. Some patients may have a dye known as contrast to obtain a better picture. Contrast for an MRI is given intravenously through a vein. You may not require contrast at all. Contrast may not be able to be used if you have kidney problems. Some people may develop an allergic reaction to the contrast. If you have a prior history of allergic reactions to imaging contrast material, please notify your doctor before the scan. Preparation instructions will be provided to you before the scan. A liver biopsy is a procedure that is done to remove a small piece of liver tissue. The tissue will be examined under a microscope by a pathologist to help determine the cause of your liver problem, such as rejection, and overall liver health. A liver biopsy can be performed several ways, percutaneous through the skin, transjugular through a vein in your neck, or through surgery. The most common are through percutaneous and transjugular methods. A liver biopsy can be done while you are hospitalized or as an outpatient procedure. If scheduled as an outpatient, it is usually a same day procedure. It is performed by a doctor who is especially trained in these procedures known as an interventional radiologist. Complications from a liver biopsy procedure are rare, but they may include things like bleeding, pain, and infection. Pre and post procedure instructions will be provided to you. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, or ERCP. An ERCP is a procedure used to diagnose and treat problems in your liver, bile ducts, and pancreas. It uses a lighted tube called an endoscope and continuous X-ray images shown on a monitor called fluoroscopy. The endoscopic tube will be inserted into your mouth, all the way down past the stomach and into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. The scope can then be used to help enter the ducts of your liver or pancreas. A dye can be injected into these ducts to look for problems such as blockages or other abnormalities. An ERCP can also be used to help repair a bile leak. This procedure may be performed while you are in hospital or scheduled as an outpatient procedure. It usually is a same-day procedure. You will have radiation exposure during the ERCP. Possible complications may include things like pancreatitis, which is an inflammation of the pancreas, abdominal pain, and infection. Depending on what was found during the procedure, you will need a follow-up ERCP within weeks or a few months later. Please alert your doctor if you have any history of contrast dye allergies prior to the procedure. Pre and post procedure instructions will be provided. This slide gives you an idea of what happens during the ERCP procedure. Activity and lifestyle after transplant. You must protect your abdomen to prevent an injury to the wound that was made during your operation. 
do not participate in any activity that will result in damage or strain to the surgical area for at least six months after your abdominal surgery. It will take one year for your surgical wound to completely heal. Straining certain activities and movements can impact your stomach and make your surgical wound open up and create a hernia. A hernia is a separation of the muscles in the abdominal wall and it will take surgery to fix this. It is therefore crucial to be cautious of your activities during the early post-operative period. Do not lift objects weighing over 15 pounds. Do not perform sit-ups. Do not push or pull heavy items. We encourage you to walk as much as possible. You can walk up and down stairs. When your prednisone dose is 5 milligrams a day or less, you can even use a treadmill or stationary bike. You may be cleared to drive after six weeks if your transplant doctor gives you permission, but you must be off all pain medications. Sexual activity can be resumed after six weeks if you are feeling well. Care of your T-tube and of your incision. Some patients will have a T-tube. This is a tube that goes into the bile duct on the right side of your abdomen. The purpose of the T-tube is to support your bile duct while it heals from the surgery. The bile duct drains bile out of your liver. Bile is a substance that can make you turn yellow if you have liver disease. Once you have returned home, you may shower while your T-tube is in place. The T-tube may be capped closed or may be attached to a drainage bag. Your T-tube will be removed about three to six months after your liver transplant. Your prednisone dose must be down to at least five milligrams daily for you to be eligible for T-tube removal. Your white cell count should not be too low prior to T-tube removal due to risk for infection. The removal must be approved by the hepatologist and the surgeon. The procedure requires an overnight stay at the hospital. Possible complications include fever, abdominal pain, or a bile leak that may require another procedure called an ERCP to fix the leak. Remember, do not submerge your tea tube in water. Do not take baths, go into a jacuzzi, or go swimming in a pool or the ocean. You will get an infection if you submerge your tea tube in water. The tea tube dressing must be changed daily. We recommend you change your tea tube dressing every day after your shower. Let the dressing get wet in the shower as it will be easier to remove. After the shower, clean the site as instructed with alcohol and betadine. Place a clean gauze dressing over the tube. Do not allow any part of the tube to hang out of the dressing. Do not allow the tube to become dislodged or pulled. Always check that the stitch holding the tube in place is still intact. If the stitch is broken, the tube may come out and a dangerous infection can happen. You must call us immediately if your tube becomes dislodged or gets pulled out even an inch. You must call us if you notice yellow or cloudy drainage at the base of the tube. You must call us immediately if the stitch holding the tube in place
becomes loose or comes out. These are the instructions for T-tube care. These will be taught to you while you are still in the hospital. Your staples will be removed about three weeks after your last surgery at one of your clinic visits. Staple removal does not hurt. Remember, you can still shower if you have staples. Steri strips are small pieces of tape that will be placed over your wound when the staples are removed. You may shower with steri strips and pat dry afterwards. Please let the steri strips fall off on their own, but if they do not fall off within 10 days after your staples are removed, you may peel them off. You may shower after discharge home from the hospital. You may not take a bath or submerge your incision or drain sites until they have completely healed and all lines, drains and tubes have been removed. Gardening and plants. Please avoid any contact with house plants, flowers and gardening for the first three months after transplant. Plants and soil may contain organisms bacteria and fungi that you could inhale and increase your risk for infection. When your transplant coordinator has cleared you to garden, you must wear gloves, shoes and socks. You may have indoor plants, but you must have someone else care for them for the first three months. If you have fresh cut flowers in your house, they should be discarded after two days and someone else should change the water each day. The plant water may contain bacteria and fungus that you could inhale, increasing your risk for infection. City water is okay to drink. You may drink tap water that has been treated at a water purification plant or has been appropriately chlorinated. Do not drink well water that has not been treated or water at campgrounds. You may drink bottled water or use a filter. Drink only bottled water when traveling to a third world country. It is safe for you to have contact with cats and dogs. Always wash your hands after touching your pets. Avoid the feces from cats, dogs and other animals as it may harbor harmful organisms. You must not clean cat litter boxes. Exotic animals such as reptiles are not allowed. Birds are not allowed either due to a high risk of fungal infection. You will need to check with your coordinator if you plan on having any other kind of pet. Smoking, drugs, and alcohol. If you destroy your transplanted liver by using drugs or alcohol, you will not receive another liver transplant. Smoking is strongly discouraged following liver transplantation. Smoking destroys the lining of the airways that bring air into your lungs. When this lining is destroyed, potentially harmful organisms and particles will settle into your lungs. Smoking can cause life-threatening infections and lung cancer. Smoking will also affect the amount of immunosuppressant level in your blood. Smoking reduces your blood's ability to carry oxygen to your liver, which can result in increased liver cell death. Smoking marijuana and other substances can introduce harmful fungus into your lungs that can give you a deadly pneumonia. Alcoholic beverages are never allowed. Use of alcohol causes liver cirrhosis and can result in liver failure. If you have hepatitis C, the use of alcohol can speed up the damage of hepatitis C virus that can do damage to your liver.